How do you how do you think uh, out there beyond the M25, as Nigel likes to say, they're reacting to this? Well, I think a lot of people are torn. You know, as you know, I've been campaigning for the last two years against a lot of his policies, mm. and we've locked down the mandates, vaccines, etc. Um, but on the other side, it's like who who are we going to have now to replace him? That's the worry. Um, you know, if we look at what's happening around the world, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, even America, um, you've got these tyrants in place. Yeah. Um, and then when you look close to home, they've got Nicola Sturgeon here, Jeremy Hunt, who's praised China over yeah. lockdowns. So who are we going to have in now? And then you see the old establishment um, remainers coming to speak out, like Michael Heseltine, now talking about... Um, you know, EU and Northern Ireland. And it's quite worrying if they're going to start trying to creep back in and try and kind of push that agenda um, of getting back into the EU on. Yeah, the Hessel time thing was interesting because I sort of felt he uh, he said the quiet bit out loud or whatever the <laughs> expression is these days because he said, you know, we get rid of Boris, now we get rid of Brexit. Exactly. And Keir Starmer sounded like he'd taken that off the table. He said, oh, no, don't worry, uh, Brexit's done, we're not going to... But I, I would bet that if they won't mention it at election time and then they'll just basically start attaching Great Britain into that Northern Irish trade agreement and will sort of be semi-passively reintegrated. Well, exactly. And then they'll say, look, well, we don't, we're, we're doing all the things that we have to do, mm. but we don't have a vote, so let's mm. get back into it, mm. you know? So mm. I could see that possibly happening. Um, but then you've got Sadiq Khan now calling for a general election. Mm. So... What would happen if we did get a Labour government or a Lib Dem government who were far more, you know, were pushing lockdowns and, and, and vaccine passports and everything mm. far more than Boris and trying to stop Boris from mm. actually releasing us out of lockdown? Um, so, you know, that's a big concern, I think, to a lot of people, because we know this cost of living crisis yeah. um, is is mainly caused because of lockdown. So, you know, I think people out there are really, you know, they are really afraid about that. And, and also, I think a lot of people are sick of this whole pantomime. It's like this reality show of what's going on yeah. in Downing Street. So we're missing all of the big topics like the vaccine yeah. death payouts, you know, what the Dutch farmers yeah. um, in the Netherlands uh, going completely against the green agenda. And, you know, MI5 came out and said we're being Ill Ill infiltrated by the Chinese. All of these are being, you know, brushed aside to watch this pantomime going on in number 10 right now. Well, that's actually a, a brilliant uh, point because those are all real things. What What is happening with the Dutch farmers, the Chinese penetration of this country and every other Western nation, These are these are all real things that will affect your lives. And instead we treat this as a soap opera for people who want soap operas full of dark. I mean, the, the interesting character is now being written out of the script and we're going to have the Tory leadership race is going to be a soap opera with 12 dull, leaden, wooden people who can barely walk across the stage without bumping into the furniture. And we're supposed to be interested in that instead of the rise of red China or uh, the uh, World Economic Forum infiltration or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is the thing as well. I find it really um, concerning that the way it's happened, it's almost, I don't want to say it's a coup, mm. but it's almost like a coup. How they all mm. are running out at the same time, saying it's based on their integrity and principles. And, <laughs> you know, it's a joke. Who, 